Hello and welcome to Open Talks. I'm your host, Louise Fernandez Owen. I'm the Global Knowledge Council for the Employment and Benefits Group at Mayor Brown. Open Talks is part of Open, a wider diversity, equity and inclusion initiative at Mayor Brown that's led by the Employment and Benefits Group. So today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be handing over the hosting duties to Miriam Bruce. Miriam is a partner in the London Employment Group and she's finally persuaded me into the hot seat. So Miriam, thank you for joining me. And I think without further ado, it's over to you. Thanks, Louise. I'm excited that you've agreed to uh, turn the tables and be in the hot seat today. And this is great timing, I think, because Open has just been recognised in the diversity and inclusion category for the International Employment Lawyers Award. So this is a great chance, I think, to hear about your experiences of setting up the initiative as its founder. So if we go back to the beginning, why did you set up Open? Well, Open is a DEI initiative, but DEI isn't my day job. Uh, we've got a great DEI team here at Mayor Brown, and they've been massive supporters of Open from the very beginning. I think as an employee, I've been in employment law for some time now, and I've always felt strongly that employment lawyers should be as up to speed with DEI as they are with other areas, whether it's restrictive covenants or whistleblowing or terminations. We're, of course, up to speed with discrimination law, but DEI is much broader than this. And it does sometimes require a level of engagement in the wider world of DEI and the continuing conversations around it that many of our clients are having as well. So I think as employment lawyers, we should treat it the same as any other area. We should read widely, do our research and keep up to date. But actually, that can be a challenge with DEI and and I, I think I recognised that challenge very early on. So Open really started as an ambitious side project, if I can put it that way. The idea was to engage Mayor Brown employment lawyers, um, just broaden perspectives where we could and actually maximise their ability to influence DE&I, given what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. I think as employment lawyers, we have a great opportunity and to some extent a responsibility to engage, connect and be informed by both the law and also real world perspectives. I agree. Now, you describe it as a side project, but were, were there parts of your experience and, and background that helped inspire you to launch Open? I think in terms of experience, um, I think in employment law speak, I have a number of protected characteristics, so they've naturally informed my perspectives. I think in terms of my role as Global Knowledge Council, that's a great blend of law, innovation and product development. So I've launched a fair few initiatives in my time at Mayor Brown. I definitely drew on my personal perspectives, my employment law experience, and also my creative approach, I suppose, to develop open. And so let's take a step forward. You have the idea. How did you, did you go about launching it? Well, you may remember, Miriam, <laughs> I came to you and other partners at Mayor Brown with a bit of a grand plan. Actually, if I can turn it back to you for a moment, I've got to squeeze in my own questions here. <laughs> Um, how did you feel when I first came to you and said, look, I've got an idea for a DEI programme and it's primarily for employment lawyers, at least initially? What was your initial reaction? So I'm not sure I agreed to be uh, asked <laughs> questions, but it is a good one. I, I remember at the time being excited right at the beginning because I thought it was a great way for us and our team as employment lawyers to um, make sure we were participating and engaging in the wider discussion about DEI, um, you know, we can read the Equality Act, we can read the case law, but actually I, I could see that there would be a lot of benefit in kind of broadening our horizons in that way. And I think the other point that struck me at the beginning was that it was going to be a different way to, to learn, hearing about people, people's own personal perspectives, I, I thought was, was going to um, inspire us in a different way. Yeah, and I think my part of my original plan was to bring together Mayor Brown employment lawyers for a series of open sessions, um, really focused on DEI knowledge sharing and team led learning. Um, I was really keen to actually 
I suppose I wanted the team to be open to hearing different perspectives, hence the name of the Mayor Brown initiative. And I also wanted to forge a, strong, a stronger link between the employment lawyers and the DEI teams and networks. I think it can be, I think, I think for many of us, our personal and professional circles can be both limited and limiting in some ways. So I really did want to provide access to a whole host of perspectives that we might not have otherwise come across. And were people receptive to open at the outset? Did you experience any reluctance or I think like that? From the very beginning, I was quite open myself with people about the initiative. I did say from the very beginning that this is something of an experiment, but I did share why I felt it was important both personally and professionally, and also why I thought it, would, it was vital that employment lawyers do take that extra step to engage in the wider world of DE&I. I think it's hugely important. And I think I think that approach that I took to be open with others, um, I really received that in return. People have been very open and honest with me in terms of feedback from the very beginning. And I'm pleased to say they've been really engaged from the outset. Definitely. Um, and I think um, in terms of my own experience too, I did one of your first sessions and I have to say I was a bit nervous when you asked me to do, to do it because although I do a lot of talking and speaking and speech giving in my in my job this was going to require me to talk about things from my own personal perspective. Um, my session if you remember was about mental health and I talked about the personal and professional reasons why I trained as a mental health first aider and I definitely remember feeling a bit nervous before the session because talking to your peers or the people that report to you about personal um, matters is always um, it's a bit different, isn't it? But I, like you, I think people were really receptive and open. Mm. And once I started talking about my experiences, kind of people, people felt that they could talk about theirs too. And that's really been the theme, I think, of our, of our sessions. Um, so have you faced any particular challenges in launching um, Open? I suppose there, there are different challenges. Um, from my perspective, Mayor Brown has a, a great range of initiatives right across the firm, whether they're DEI initiatives or other initiatives. So I wanted to I wanted to make sure that Open was aligned and consistent with those initiatives. And I also wanted to take the opportunity to, well, for Open to shine a spotlight on some of those initiatives. Um, and I think more broadly, I think both of us are probably aware that DEI is facing a number of challenges at the moment, whether in the UK or other jurisdictions. But I think from my perspective, Open is purely about engagement and education. And I think it is really important to hear different perspectives and different views, particularly for employment lawyers, and particularly where we're advising on discrimination issues and DEI strategies. No, I agree. And, and has there been any unexpected revelations or surprises along the way in launching Open? Yeah, there have definitely been a few surprises along the way. Um, I'd have to say, from the very beginning, the Open Initiative and the Open Sessions have given rise to a number of emotional responses, I suppose, to put it that way. Um, and I think that's based on the, the types of issues and topics we're discussing. Um, but from my perspective, I suppose on the one hand, I hadn't expected that, so I was surprised. But on the other hand, the emotions were, if I can put it this way, more positive and they were good emotions. And they demonstrated a, a level of connection and engagement in DE&I that we might not have had otherwise. So for me, um, it showed me that Open was working and it re really was a win for me. I think from my perspective, um, I'm always really happy when after a session, people come up to me and say, oh, I, I just didn't know that before, or I hadn't heard it, or I had heard about that, but I didn't really think it was a thing. I think if Open can help contribute to broadening perspectives, that's great, and it's a win for me. And also it contributes to that sort of ripple effect. I'm hopeful, and I know that people do do this, they will go home and maybe share what they've learned and they've heard with their friends and family. And that ripple effect is central to what we do at Open. And I have to say, I've always been, I, I am one of those people and I've always been really clear from the very beginning that this is a learning exercise for all of us and DE&I is constantly evol evolving and none of us is an expert. 
No, I agree. I've definitely learned a lot from Open. I think one of the most surprising things for me was you don't get many people asking for meetings to be longer. I think we we <laughs> yes. limited these, didn't we, at the beginning, but people yeah. were keen for it to be a bit longer than the yeah, initial slot. That's right. I mean, from the very beginning, I was I was quite conscious that because this was slightly experimental, I didn't want to take up too much time in people's diaries. And um, so I was very clear just to allocate quite a short amount of time to it. But from the ver first session, more than one person came up to me and said, these sessions have to be longer. And you rarely get that feedback I don't after think anyone's training. Asked me for a longer <laughs> meeting. So, so yeah. I was really pleased. And we took that feedback on board. Very good. So what about standout moments or highlights? What, what comes to mind? There have been many, many highlights, actually. Um, we now have a wide number of lawyers um, and others involved in Open as the initiative. And we've invested a huge number of hours, hundreds of hours, I think, um, in the initiative across the board. So I think, I think for me, that's a highlight. A colleague recently said to me that Open is our legacy. Um, and I think that investment in DEI engagement and education will always be a highlight for me. There are some other highlights that I can, that do come to mind. I think one of the first ones was one of our early sessions. We had a couple of colleagues that ran a session for us, actually two sessions. And without any prompting or encouragement from me, they decided to rerun that session for their, for their own practice area and their own departments. I think we always have to remember that our colleagues are sharing information with us that they might not be sharing with the, the colleagues that they work most closely with. So for them to take that step, that was a real highlight for me. I'd also have to say this podcast series is a, is a highlight. It wasn't in the original plan. <laughs> Um, but because Open gathered quite a bit of momentum from the very beginning, I was really keen to continue the conversations that we were having internally, externally. So we've collaborated with clients and contacts on both the Open sessions and also um, this podcast series. Um, so I, I think those collaborations will always be highlights for me. And then last but not least, in terms of standout moments, I'd have to say one of our most um, recent open sessions. It was one of our largest open sessions and it was attended by multiple practice areas. Um, and I just took a moment during that session because it was one of our largest to, to look around the room and I saw that every single person was hanging on the every word of our colleague who was talking about his particular perspective. So for open to provide a space for that knowledge sharing and that engagement was fantastic and a highlight for me. I think when, when I think about highlights, I always it's always worth making the point that um, wider initiatives and I think concrete targets are really relevant and central to DE&I progress. But I've, I've always thought there's a space for um, just listening to different people's perspectives and carving out that time to do that. It's really important, I think, for, for us. And it makes such a different for, for difference for us as employment lawyers. No, I agree. I think definitely my highlight was or has been watching our colleagues, many of whom don't necessarily tend to give do public speaking as part of their role, really take the time and, and be generous with that time and sharing their personal stories. I think that's been really inspiring um, and kind of a, an extra bit to the learning that we've also had. Definitely. So looking at the legacy idea, uh, um, how would you, what advice would you give to others who are thinking about um, perhaps relaunching or, or, or doing something similar with their DE&I initiatives? What could we learn from Open? I think that, um, from my perspective, I think when I develop any product or initiative, um, I tend to be quite collaborative in my approach and I welcome thoughts and feedback and it makes for a stronger end product and that's definitely been the case with Open. So I think if anyone listening or watching is thinking about a DE&I initiative, I'd really encourage them to speak to their DE&I teams and check in with them first. It's, it, it's great, I think, certainly from my perspective, to have the buy-in and the support from DE&I teams and networks and it helps with, I think it helps to contribute to the success of the initiative. I think if you're also listening or watching this and think, right, I've got a very specific idea that I think will definitely work in my workplace or my organisation, 
I think if you feel really strongly about it, I think the likelihood is that you're really felt the best, uh, best place to help take that initiative forward. So I think I'd really encourage people to take that step. It's definitely worthwhile. I agree. A passion is the best starting point, isn't it? So I think we've got time for one final question. And I know you ask this of those that you interview, but why D, E and I, Louise? I'd have to say, why not D, E and I? Um, I think, first of all, we should acknowledge that there's very, there's so many acronyms in this area, whether it's DEI, EDI, or a whole host of other acronyms. But for me, first and foremost, this area is about human beings. I've been in the legal sector for some time, and I'm really keen for Open to provide a space for different voices and different perspectives. And I'm equally keen for employment lawyers to take the opportunity to engage further in DE&I. It's really central to our role and it's hugely important. And I think whether or not we label it DE&I, I think hearing different voices and perspectives is vital. And I'm really proud that Open has played a part in providing an opportunity to engage and learn. I agree. Well, unfortunately, Louise, my time or your time in the hot seat is coming to an end. Phew. That is all, that's all the time we've got for questions. But thank you so much for sharing your journey about launching Open. Hopefully it will give our listeners and viewers something to think about when they think about their own initiatives and what they can do with them. Thank you very much. So that brings us to the end of this episode. As always, there are more episodes to come. And if you've missed any episodes, please do check out our Open Talks page on the Mayor Brown website or your preferred streaming platform. Until next time, thank you for joining us.